1945, President Harry S. Truman made the decision to drop the atomic bomb on Japan, ending the war in the Pacific. His decision came after considerable debate and a multitude of military, political, and social options that were used to engage the United States. Dropping the bomb was successful in ending the war, but resulted in numerous civilians' deaths and casualties. The atomic bomb and its long-term effects, as well as immediate consequences, led many to continue to question the decision as to whether it was the best way to end the war. The use of the atomic bomb began a significant historical debate in the United States' history. The majority of individuals, including the president's staff and advisors, were fearful of using the weapon. The use of nuclear weapons enabled humans the highest level of destruction known to man. If President Harry Truman had not greenlighted the project and given use of the atomic bomb, World War II might have continued on with a much different outcome, including a potential loss of the United States forces. The combination of these events and leadership decisions continued to spark tremendous discussions even today. Before his death, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt initiated the Manhattan Project, which involved the design and construction of an atomic bomb. The bomb was not potentially made to be dropped over Japanese territory. It was being built as a part of a global arms race with the goal of developing a larger, more powerful bomb. The atomic bomb was a highly secretive and experimental weapon. In fact, only those specific United States government agencies and the people that were involved with the specifics of its design knew of its existence. Truman only made aware of its presence after he became president in 1945. Should the United States have deployed the use of the atomic bomb as a weapon against Japan? One side was in favor of immediately utilizing the experimental weapon to aid and quickly demoralize the hopes and aspirations of Japan and any thoughts of winning war. In applying the weapon, President Truman defeated the Japanese and quickly and decisively ended the war. Instead of allowing the Japanese to continue a slow and costly retreat, Truman took a stand on this side of the debate because he did not want to continue the fight. Truman gave Japan the option for an unconditional surrender, but did not get a response. There can be no peace in the world until the military power of Japan is destroyed. With the same completeness as was the power of the European dictators. To do that, we are now engaged in a process of deploying millions of our armed forces against Japan in a mass movement of troops and supplies and weapons over 14,000 miles, a military and naval feat unequaled in all history. Substantial portions of Japan's key industrial centers have been leveled to the ground in a series of record incendiary raids. What has already happened to Tokyo will happen to every Japanese city whose industries feed the Japanese war machine. If the Japanese insist on continuing resistance beyond the point of reason, their country will suffer the same destruction as Germany. Our blows will destroy their whole modern industrial plant and organization, which they have built up during the past century and which they are now devoting to a hopeless cause. We have no desire or intention to destroy or enslave the Japanese people. But only surrender can prevent the kind of ruin which they have seen come to Germany as a result of continued useless resistance. He took that as a sign that the surrender from Japan was nowhere in sight. Truman's administration believed the Japanese would never surrender, that Japan would inflict horrifying casualties on American troops. In a 1994 Time Magazine article, Professor Lance Murrow said, The scales of death were pretty heavy, well before the atomic bomb. To have possessed such a weapon to end the war most instantly and not to have used it would have been indisplicable and to those who would have died in the longer war, inexcusable. The other side was against the use of the atomic bomb. This concerned group had doubts surrounding the estimated casualty figures, the destruction that was being provided to them. Those who questioned using the atomic bomb included many of the Manhattan Project scientists. They wondered if the use of this devastating new weapon would actually end the war. July 16, 1945, scientists in Alamogordo, New Mexico, tested the atomic bomb and its effects. These scientists tested the radiation effects that the atomic bomb had on humans. 
They tested how much land the bomb could destroy and estimated how many people could be killed if this weapon were to be used. There were many alternatives they believed, and President Truman did not explore these. Atomic energy may not have been a necessary means of winning war. And the ramifications of the actions for individuals involved the bombing of civilians in Japan and the losses of the war. They were concerned over destroying the whole city and wiping out tens of thousands of human beings. Sixty years later, Americans still deliberate on the difficult decision that President Truman and his staff made. There were other debates based on the use of the atomic bomb being used as a weapon of war. Some that are still being discussed today are, did the use of the atomic bomb on Japan shorten World War II? Would World War II have gone on with losses from U.S. and Allied forces if the atomic bomb had not been used? American officers, from President Truman on down, fought to save the lives of U.S. soldiers during World War II. They were willing to take any measures to end what had become a battle to the finish against the forces of Imperial Japan. The simple fact remains that the U.S. was already stopping bombings of Japan and inflicted casualties greater than those from the atomic bombs. That loss of life did not convince Japan to surrender, so more drastic measures seemed to be required. Paul W. Tibbetts, pilot of the Enola Gay, said, Those of us who gained the victory have nothing to be ashamed of, neither do we offer any apology. Those of us remaining will die believing we made the world a better place because of our efforts to secure peace that has been held for almost 50 years. I did an interview with Bill Knopp and Marshall Harris, both are World War II veterans that were stationed at Iwo Jima at the time that the atomic bomb was being dropped. Mr. Knopp was 19 years old, stationed at Iwo Jima, which was about 700 miles away from Hiroshima. Mr. Knopp did not know that the atomic bomb was going to be dropped. We were happy that the war was finally over. None of us wanted to go on to another division of fighting in the Pacific. United States forces would have lost many more soldiers than Japan would have ever lost during the war. The U.S. was extremely outnumbered, but overall it was the right decision and means of winning war, said Mr. Knopp. I also conducted a video interview with Corporal Marshall Harris. Swipes. All through Japan was sharpened bamboo sticks, and they were to use those as weapons against Marines or Navy or Army, anybody that was invading. And they were sworn to the emperor that they would die trying, that they would be, they'd give up their life. And then they were arming boys about your age and with rifles, and, uh, and they had taught them how to fire. And there are many, many other things that they had prepared ready for us when we got there. Japan didn't know that we were going to drop an atomic bomb. They had no idea we had such a thing. But they were getting prepared for a tremendous invasion. Uh, they had threatened to kill 400,000 Allied and American prisoners that they had imprisoned if we invaded the island, if we invaded Honshu or, or any of those islands. And that was on uh, on the minds of our chiefs of staff. And that if we made an assault wave on Honshu, they might just kill all those those people. And uh, so there were a lot of extenuating factors that went into it. Had we not dropped the atomic bomb, we would have had to kill millions of people in uh, Osaka and Nagoya and Kobe and Yokohama and Kawasaki. This topic leads to a tremendous amount of diplomacy, but mainly as seen today with the Declaration of the United Nations and the Nuclear Arms Act. Nuclear-free countries became a welcomed agreement around the world. These important movements have continued to establish a sense of peace between nations after World War II. In 1945, President Harry S. Truman made the decision to drop the atomic bomb on Japan, ending the war in the Pacific. His decision came after considerable debate and a multitude of military, political, and social options that were used to engage the United States. Dropping the bomb was successful in ending the war, but resulted in numerous civilians' deaths and casualties. The atomic bomb and its long-term effects, as well as immediate consequences, led many to continue to question the decision as to whether it was the best way to end the war.